Number 68, using the data in Appendix G, calculate the standard enthalpy change for each of the following reactions. And then we have this reaction right here. Two lithium hydroxides, two LiOH solids plus CO2 gas will yield Li2CO3 solid plus H2O gas. Now what I did for you guys is I already went into Appendix G and I wrote down the numbers for each corresponding uh, compound here. So just a couple of things. If they're asking for enthalpy, remember enthalpy is always delta H. So when you go into these tables, there's going to be delta G values and S values. You only care about the delta H value. Also, I want to point out that if you are you know, going to look through the appendix, just know that some compounds may have different states. For example, there will be an H2O gas, and then there's going to be an H2O liquid as well. Just make sure you... You, you know, you actually pay attention to the states in this case. This is the only time in which we care about the states. Okay, so now how are we going to find the delta H for all of these? Well, it's a simple formula. It's this one. So the delta H of a reaction, Rxn is just shortened for reaction, is the sum of the delta H products minus the sum of the delta H reactions. The sum this little symbol here just means you got to add up the products and the reactants. So which means I just need one number for the left-hand side and one number for the right-hand side. So what do we do? Well, after you get the numbers, all you have to do is multiply each one by how many you see in your balanced equation. Now I know that it's balanced already because I see that they put a coefficient here. But if you want, you could always pause the video to just double check that it's balanced, but I'm going to assume that it's balanced. And you just take your coefficients and you times it by the, the delta H value that's on that, that number. So this would be times by 2. There's no number here, which means that it's a 1, so I'd multiply that by 1. Same thing goes for this one. There's a 1 here. And then the same thing for this one. It's a 1. Now you literally will add the reactants together and you will add the products together. So I will add all the blues and I'll add all the reds. Get one blue number, get one red number. Got to get one reactant number and uh, one product number. So if I plug this in, two times negative 487.5, okay, and then plus a negative 393.51. So my total for my reactant side is a negative 1,368.51. Let's do it for the product side now. So I get negative 1216.04 plus negative 241.82. So I get a total of a negative 1,457.86. Now, since I have one number for my reactant and one number for my product, I'm ready to plug into my formula. So the delta H for the whole reaction would be always products minus reactants. So it would be negative 1,457.86 minus negative 1,368.51. Remember, when you're Minusing by a negative, it's keep change change. So it's really, you know, you're adding a positive value. So let's see here. What would be for the whole equation? So this number plus 1368.51. Negative 87.35. And just know that the units for delta H, if you're using the appendix, is always kilojoule per mole. So we're going to be releasing heat here because it's a negative number. So we're going to be releasing 89.35 kilojoules per mole when this reaction happens. All right. That's it, guys. Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. And if you want to help us out, press the subscribe buttons and tell your friends. All right. Tell your classmates. Maybe they would benefit from this channel as well. Thank you so much for that. And I hope you're all doing well. Have a great day. See you later. Bye-bye.